from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Wow Report on Radio Andy, where we count down the top 10 things that made us go wow. wow. Uh, I'm Fenton Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder, joined by World of Wonder's chief creative Officer, Ding. and it says here, Chief Diva Historian. You're a diva historian. Oh, I like historian that. of I like divas, that. Tom Campbell. Hello, Fenton. <laughs> and How, when did you become a diva historian? I didn't know this. It was on your uh, I, yesterday. I yesterday, graduate school. I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> and editor of the Wow Report, James St. James. Darling, it is really hot in here. It's a little warm. I gotta take off my clothes. Mm, oh, take it <laughs> off, Fenton. Wow. Nelly. Oh. Nelly. Mickey Mouses. Uh-huh. It is really hot, though. Normally, cool. it's like a little... Cr- I hope James will be in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll not. See what happens. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> um, we are coming to you from the WOW Storefront Gallery. You know, blistering 90 degrees. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Tonight, here, this very same place, we will be announcing and handing out the WOWies. It's a in big Hollywood, night. California. It is the biggest night of the year. It, it so kicks <laughs> off. The, it kicks off the award season, is what it does. Come on down. <laughs> it does. Uh-huh. If you're it's in LA, uh-huh. come on down. If you're in LA, it's seven from seven o'clock. Yes. Mm-hmm. Find a RuPaul like star. It, it stubs the toe of awards. Season. <laughs> 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 yeah, kick it out. Yes. <laughs> and uh, of course, it's also the home of the storefront gallery. It's the home of our store. But if you can't come to the store, you can check out amazing holiday because we just had cyber. Uh, Monday, Cyber uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, at get dot world of wonder dot net slash holiday. Get dot get world yeah, get. of wonder. I didn't believe that was a real slash thing. What? Get dot Say it again. Let's do it. I, I don't think I understand. Get dot world of wonder dot net slash holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I it really works. It, just <laughs> it really works. It really works. Um, or you can watch us on Wow Report. Or you can listen on Radio Andy. Watch us on Wow Presents on, on YouTube. Let's go. Is goodness. the show over? Or is it just starting? <laughs> okay, let's so go. Come on. Number, Number 10. Number 10. I was in New York for Thanksgiving. Grateful to be there. Grateful to be back. Grateful to be with you guys. Um, I saw a lot of plays, and the one that impressed me the most, really? the binge-worthy Broadway show, is The Inheritance. Oh, the big gay three-hour one. Yes. It's, Seven hours. It's, it's, Seven it's, hours. It's by Matthew Lopez, a relatively young playwright. He's been he had a couple of things produced before. And it's hard to explain, um, but it's sort of inspired by the novel Howard's End by Ian Okay. Forrester. Um, and it's about multiple generations of gay people. It's about pre- it sort of takes place from 2015 to 2017. That's, just, that's not the plot of Howard's End at all, though. No. And and uh, I, Ian Forster is actually a character in the play, but he oh. he harkens back to uh, the past, and characters are young and old. And Ian Forster actually comes to life in his imagination, and they talk about his legacy, which is that he wrote, you know, these gay novels. Maurice, Maurice and Morris, Mar- Morris, Mar- wait, Morris. And these coded gay things like Howard's End, but he never in his life, when he died in 1970, never came out, oh. never published them. Um, Morris, I think, was published after his death, right? That's correct. Right. Now, I, I've heard both amazing, fabulous things about this, and I've heard some really bad reviews, too. Can you speak to both? Sides I of the- was nervous going, because it's two different nights. There's part one and part two, and I suggest, I wholeheartedly endorse you to both. It's soulfully written. Mm-hmm. It is beautifully acted. It's an incredible cast of beautiful men who you get to look at the entire time. Any it's breakout bonus. stars? Um, I can't remember anyone's name. Okay. Like, you're you're really good, but there's, it's a it's it's a cast of really talented people that we know, and one very familiar name who's excellent as he is in everything, John ben, John Benjamin Hickey, okay, is in it, and so good, and um and it I went for the first night. I thought I was going to buy it for the first Did night. Did you know anything going into? No, it? I knew no. nothing. Okay, uh-huh. I, knew, I knew less than I'm telling you. I just mm-hmm. knew it was like supposed to be epic. It, it it has already won like every award. It started on the West End of London mm-hmm. and it won every award. And is it, it going to sweep the Tonys? Um, I think it will have a, nice. a, a great. But it is. Um, and, and I hate to say it, but like people say, it's like the Angels of America of today. Okay. Okay. Now, all I'm, I never saw Angels in America on HBO. I saw it when it first came out during the height of the AIDS epidemic. Mm -hmm. And I just reminded a day long marathon of being wrecked. I just have the emotional memory of it just 
ripping me apart. I'm not saying it wasn't good right. and wonderful. It was just like I was raw. It was raw. It's like I don't want to go back to see Angels in America. No offense of the artistry but, but of it. But wait a minute. But, but now this. This has. This is different. Does it touch on the AIDS epidemic? Yes, it, it does it, in it, a way. So the first and yeah. the first act, the, the first part, which is in three uh, acts, um, ends with a wallop. There's an emotional wallop, which I will not spoil. Right. That people are like, see the first act. Don't worry about the second. The second's quite good too, and it, it just it touches upon. This is a stupid analogy, but Drag Race is the gay. Right? You watch Drag Race, you know it's being made by gay, gay people for gay people. You're, 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 it's authentic and all of it's fun and it's like, mm. this is the same thing but it's a drama. It's just like it's so but when you our say- language, our experience, our loss, our 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 self-hating, our 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 community, our how we lift each other up, how we are attracted to each other, HIV, now being worried about HIV, the people we lost. Uh, it's about rich gays, poor gays, activist gays. It really shines a light on so many facets of our community. And I'm doing a terrible job. No, All no, I can no, say no, is no, no, I loved it. But you, you say mm. that it's about generations of, of gay men, but does it, is it mostly set in, in modern times? or is, It's is set it, in modern times, but it goes different okay. places. And it goes, it, it talks about somebody who survived, to a couple, an older couple, uh, uh, talk about what it was like then. Um, and then Ian Forrester's talking about what it was like in mm, the okay. you know, early beginning of the 20th century. So it speak, but, but it does speak to 20 something year olds who would go to see it. Absolutely. Uh-huh. It is their life. And, there, and now this is really self-serving, but the, you know, cause it talks about the election of Trump and the night and how the world changed. It's very, it very much uh, ties up all of the things that it talks about popular things and big themes. And at some point they're talking about camp and gay and no one utters a RuPaul's Drag Race. There's not even one sachet away. I thought like if they were really capturing New York gay people, 20 of them talking at a party, uh-huh. they'd so have a little. Your, that's, that's, your my one one criticism. that's my one note. That's my one note, Matthew Lopez. I don't know if it's too late. More Drag Race. To More the, Drag Race. To go into the play. If you could just change a couple of things. But I, again, the inheritance, people will say, just see the first half, see both halves. Take the time, maybe break it up over two different days. But it's so worth seeing. And it's not just for gay people. It's, it's, it's beautiful piece of art I think currently open at the Ethel Barrymore Theatre on Broadway in God New York. I love me some Ethel Barrymore <laughs> New York I miss City. her <laughs> James number nine what made you go number wild? nine number nine Something that made me go, wow, I went to go see Knives Out over the big long weekend. Which I thought the promos looked like the worst movie ever made, no. and yet I hear otherwise. It is fantastic. It's in the grand tradition of uh, murder at a spooky mansion <laughs> movies. <laughs> yes. You know, many, many, many movies have been set there. Um, it's the store. It's um, a spectacular cast. It's so good. Christopher Plummer plays the world's greatest detective novelist, and it's his 85th birthday, and he gets gathers his family together in this spooky old mansion, and he ends up with his throat slit at the end of the night. And <laughs> is that it, a spoiler alert? No, it just oh, happens in the oh, first ten minutes. Okay, it, it's, it's very early on. There, there's a murder that happens, and through, as the movie begins to unspool, you realize that every single person there, all the family members, each has a motive right. for wanting him dead. And uh, <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis yes. plays the matriarch, his daughter, the matriarch of the family. She's married to Don Johnson. It's wonderful to see these two spar back and forth. <laughs> Their son is Chris Evans, Captain America. Uh, the audience swoons every time he's on the camera. He's sort of a bad boy. Um, Tony Collette is doing Drew Drogi as Chloe <laughs> Sevigny. She plays a social media influencer. She is absolutely hysterical. Michael Shannon is in it. He's a weirdo. And his son is a 16-year-old alt-right neo-Nazi troll who spends the whole time masturbating in the bathroom to Breitbart. Uh, it is it is absolutely insane. Actually masturbating? Well, th- that's the joke. The running joke is, where's your neo-Nazi son? He's in the bathroom masturbating to oh. like images of Sarah Palin. <laughs> <laughs> It's, but the, the script is really funny. It's really good. You think you know where it's going. It twists and it turns and it twists and turns, and you don't really know. There's a couple of big clues that tell you who it is. And is it everyone? Is it one of those everyone no, did no, it? No, no, it isn't. no. It isn't. Oh, okay. it, 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 one person Some, did it. But you think and it, you didn't see it coming. I, I, once it started happening, once I realized who it was, then you can put the, the other clues that you sort of see along the way. Right, but it kept you on the it edge of your seat. It keeps you on the edge of your toe. Daniel Craig, James Bond, is the Sondheim singing Southern detective, oh. and he's always sort of singing, I'm losing my mind. So it's a parody of the genre. It is a parody of the genre, but it also is a very good example of the genre. The yeah, mm. it, gives the, it keeps the integrity. Now, this is the second um, whodunit 
movie that well, you've been obsessed another... with this year. Which one is better, right? This one or Ready or Not? Well, no, Ready or Not wasn't. Oh. Uh, it, that's that's murder in a big in, in a spooky mansion again. But that one, the entire family is trying to kill the girl, and oh. they're all chasing each, they're chasing her around the mansion. And she has to hide. I think that was a more of a forgettable one. This is this is a really just really well structured mystery. Uh, in that, in I'm the just surprised Agatha. Michael Caine's not in it. Well, but doesn't it seem like Michael Caine should be in Knives Out. <laughs> but but this is um, Daniel Craig would play it's the is new playing, Michael Caine. Yeah, exactly. And did you, do you ever see him in a bathing suit? No, you don't. Okay, I just had to ask. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, the cast. Is there a shower is, again at the it's, house. It's, it's think just people really shower. fun to watch everybody sort of like tearing, chewing the scenery and uh, so there's no mis- nudity. There is no nudity. No murder mystery is a dirty job. They need showers. Thank you. Mm. Knives Out is in theaters now. It is. Yeah, yeah. go see it, please. James, uh, my number eight. Number eight. Have you seen uh, Parasite? No, I want to. I it's really on my want list. to too. Is is um, the the Korean director who yes, did Bong um, Joon Ho? Yeah, Bong Joon Ho. Yes, who did Okja? Okja. 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 And, and Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer, which is now on Netflix, and you really need to check it's it out. It's an extraordinary never film, Snowpiercer. Fabulous. I yes. mean, I find something. Yes, I, everybody's loving this film. Yes. Uh, it is the film to see. Uh oh. Uh oh. Do you feel the coming? Richard Terrible again. I will. will well, yes, you know, I thought Parasite, I thought I was going to see some sort of bioterror type thing. So in the first 10 minutes, I was looking for some signs of the Parasite. But right. of course, Parasite is the title that applies basically to the rich and the poor and the way they feed off each other. And, and uh, it's set in, it's basically two families, the Kims, who are very poor and live in a basement. And they have a, a loo that is sort of, this is the best detail about their place, a, a, a loo that is raised so high you can only bend down to sit on it. But they're still in the basement. Oh, right, because it's so close oh, to I the see. ceiling. It's so close to the ceiling. Yeah, Thank okay. you. Yes, it's like a half floor in that. <laughs> and um, then the, 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 the parks. And the parks, as their name might suggest, live in a beautiful, palatial, mid-century, modern, expansive place in South Korea. And of course, you know, space is at a premium a lot in Asia. So yes. in fact, they have this massive mansion that's minimally furnished. So they're the rich people. And the story basically is the poor family, they assemble pizza boxes for a living, and they live in this basement that gets fumigated and flooded, and, it's, and they open the windows so they get free insecticide, you know, to get rid of. <laughs> and the, but then the, 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 the son um, gets to go to this rich family and gets a job tutoring the daughter. And then he manages to introduce his sister and get her a job tutoring the son. And then he manages to get rid of the chauffeur. And so his dad gets a job as the chauffeur. And then he manages to get rid of the housekeeper who take, a mother takes over. So the ah. family, the very poor family, are now entrenched How in parasitic the rich. parasitic of them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but of course, you know, all, you know, your sort of uh, Maureen Dowds, you know, say, oh, it's the rich people who are parasitic because they outsource childcare and all the family things to other people and strangers and they've been nearly infantilized by their wealth. I mean, look, it's good, it's good. I didn't. I just, you know, everybody loves it, and I just thought, no. Is it a bit of a thriller? Because I, I saw the trailer, and it made me th- feel like it was more of a thriller. It had aspects yes, of that. Yes, well, that's what's sort of interesting about it. There are twists and the turns. It's like, for starts off fairly comic, and uh, and then it sort of gets really dark. So that's where, James, I think well, you no, would but love it. It, it, it. it sort of... So yeah, here's what, I have a friend who um, recently became a billionaire, a, a sort of a tech com oh, billionaire. Dude, I what on earth are you doing here? Why are you here? Why are we Why aren't they taking care of me? <laughs> but when I was talking to her about this, mm. she said, um, well, why do I want to see another movie about how horrible the rich people right. are? And I'm wondering if, if maybe the wealthy who go see it hate this movie while everyone else is are going on and on about it because... Are you putting fence in well, the that's billionaire Well, that, that's what I'm trying to get to well, right one here. Of the key dialogue scenes is is uh, is the poor family say the the dad says something like they're rich but they're still nice and someone else says no they're rich but they're nice because they're rich and so it's like, like what is no true blesso, niceness a no and, when, oblige and when the family rich family goes away and the poor people take over the house completely they're not so nice so sure so like but, but everyone seems to be beating up on the rich people and saying the rich people are the parasites and that the poor people are parasites because they suppose they're obliged to be Parasitic. They've got to be desperate. There are several unbelievably dark twists. Um, oh. Go see it. 
Parasite is in theaters now. This is a director who, in I would say, the eyes of the culture and the critics, can do no wrong. I, I kind of also didn't really get Snowpiercer, but, but you did know. you see that Snowpiercer is going to be a series? They're making it into I a didn't. yeah. I did not. Parasite in theaters now. Snowpiercer soon to be a series. And I mean, and a train the, going around the world. What I you get to explain? It's like, but, it's but like t- Super Train, that NBC show from <laughs> right? the seventies. But Tilda Swinton <laughs> just chooses the scenery, and Chris well, Evans is in that too. Anything Tilda? So just point the camera at yeah. Tilda Swinton. Chris Evans yeah. Friday here. It is. Ooh. Ooh la la. All right, let's take a break. What's the question, Blake? Well, uh, Sunday was World AIDS Day. Yes, yes, it was. And it was started by James W. Bunn and Thomas Netter. Um, what year was it started, and why did they choose December 1st? Such a good question. Mm, you're listening to The Wire Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to The Wire Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and James and Blake, of course. And you asked us a question before the break. Yes, uh, last Sunday was World AIDS Day. It was started by James W. Bunn and Thomas Netter. And I wanted to know what year it started and why they chose December 1st. I'm going to say it started in 89. Tom, why you think they? Why you think it was December 1st? It is December 1st. That's, that's great. Yeah, we World know AIDS that, Day. Yeah. But maybe 85. I'm going to go earlier. What? Give a year. Yeah, I was going to say 86. What do we got for a year? 87. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So you guys think. Mm-hmm. And then I think it, this isn't the reason, but it's also Bette Midler's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to say they, they made World AIDS Day because of Bette Midler being such a wonderful advocate. I actually don't know. Uh, it was chosen because it's far enough after the U.S. elections and it's uh, after Thanksgiving and before the holidays. So they figured <laughs> they would strategic, get the best very media. Gay practical. The, yeah. the best media coverage. Yes. It always moves me. Every it, it, it doesn't go by without uh, remembering people we've lost and the people. And I always think of and the advocates, the Elizabeth Taylors, all those celebrities and people that stood out and said something when people weren't listening. To I us. just found out about this woman from Hot Springs, Arkansas, where my mom yeah. lives. Ruth, I forget her last, Baker, I believe. Mm-hmm. Her name was actually Ruth Coker Burks, who was like a gay angel. And yes. I'm gonna totally visit that cemetery. She took story. care of. She took care of many, 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 many men huh. dying of AIDS. Right. Which there's a character played by I think Lois Smith, the actress in Inheritance, which we talked really? about last time, that has the same storyline. Tie just, it all up in a bow. In a bow. Mm-hmm. But it's just, uh, uh, put it all up in the bow. Yeah. yeah. Everything really. comes around. Okay. Well, AIDS Day also comes. I think just a week after the Transgender Day of Remembrance. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, yes. Yeah. Um, we are counting down top 10 things that made us go, wow, wow, this past week, we have reached number seven. Number seven. Um, I'm on a theme. I saw a lot of theater. I'm putting two, uh, musical experiences together. I saw Jagged Little Pill. Okay. The, Alan- the sort of jukebox oh. Alanis Morissette mm-hmm. thing that that's uh, real. I think it's super, it's super. Super overwrought. Isn't it ironic, though? <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> um, and I also saw American Utopia, which is the David Byrne performance oh, right. piece. Okay. Okay. Compare and contrast. Um, very radically different approaches. Jagged Little Pill. They use the music, um, uh, and but it's all set against this r- multiple issue play. It's a f- white rich family in Connecticut, and the father's addicted to online porn, and the mother has been an, is a perfectionist. Has been an accident. Is now hooked on uh, pain pills. And the son has been pushed and pushed and pushed, and he witnesses a rape at a college, at a high school party. And the daughter, who's been adopted since birth, who's African American, is a lesbian who's falling in love. I mean, is it good. a melodrama? Is it that is what's that? over the top. It's crazy. Um, there's literally a moment where they march and they have placards, and it's just like it's like talk about putting the themes in your face. It's like here they are. Is it? It's not a. Is it a comedy? Not at all. Oh. There's some funny moments, but it's really super. It's a lot. And part of me was like, you know what? Life's a lot. The thing is, there isn't just a family dealing with someone's drug addiction. It's also but, a family dealing with someone's drug addiction, and there's But are they shoehorning all these issues into just to get the songs? It's a lot. I think they meant to make it a real... Um, um, it's it's uh oh, what's her name? It's it's Diablo. Diablo Cody. Cody. Oh, and so say she, no more. She goes deep. She goes deep. <laughs> what, and there what are does some that mean? amazing moments. I find Diablo Cody just to be a pain. Well, in then the... don't go see uh, <laughs> Jagged Little. Did Tell. you like it? I uh, appreciate a lot of it. I didn't love it. <laughs> okay. um, there is there there's a lesbian character who sings the 
You Ought to Know song, which you, is you show ought to know. People, not since I saw uh, a Jennifer Holiday in, uh, in, 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 Dream until, in Dream Girls, where there was a standing ovation mid show. There's a standing ovation for this woman mid show. Really? Of course, everyone there is probably an Alanis Morissette fan, and that's the biggest hit. And you, and she's so angry, it turns red and it's rock and roll. Did he go down on you in a theater? And I kept thinking that <laughs> that will be what's on the, on the Tonys. So I was thinking that's going to be in the Tonys. Um, um, the other funny thing is about that is like you know, I was doing De- Ethel Merman right there. I don't know if you know. Oh, I, I was doing Alanis as Ethel, which, which it's also part of it. Now. But um, you know, like the father's like a very handsome, square jawed uh, banker. But when he sings, those like because <laughs> <I'm happy." laughs> all Alanis Morissette songs kind of sound like Alanis Morissette. And then American <laughs> Utopia, you know, the 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 um, the Talking Heads weren't my favorite band, but they were inescapable. I liked them, okay. but I didn't buy a lot. David Byrne is 67, fit. Handsome. Is he in it? He's in it. Really? It's really a concert. Is piece, it just him, concept. like Bruce Springsteen? It's him like... with eleven other uh, people on stage, dressed just like him. But they're uh, they're multiculti. They're, they're it's men and women, and there's dancers and singers and Does musicians. He wear the big suit with the big, with it's the big just a gray suit okay. with a gray. It looks very. Because you know the iconic suit I'm talking about. With yes. the, the, yes. the giant suit. Yes. It's like if Bill Nye the Science Guy shopped at Theory. And then did a one-man show. <laughs> Does um, it that have a story? Does it have a story? It's, 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 it's his own ramblings and his own view of the world. It starts about the human brain and how many neurons kids have and all the possibilities and that, what we do with it. He's telling the He's story. He's telling the story. Okay. So it's sort of his guide tour. Did he write it? His music. Greatest yes. hits? Um, Once it's, in a lifetime. It, it's the greatest, yes. Life and in more time. Psycho, psycho. I ain't got time for that now. So at yep. the, very, the next to last song, <laughs> he says, I just want you to know that... The theater has very kindly said that we can dance in this theater, but please don't dance in the aisles because that would get you an advantage if the house caught on fire. Oh, oh the house. No, 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 down no, no, the house. And can I tell you, I was a little like tired during it. It wasn't really the fault of the thing. It's really brilliantly done. But when that song comes on, you realize you have drank You've, you've held a red cup in your hand a million times uh, dancing to that song and just seeing everyone in the theater it was like another like incredible communal rousing, moment yeah yes. 360 okay. uh, Utopia versus Jagged Little Pill who wins? I would go see American Utopia especially mm. if you're a uh, David Byrne right. fan alright James what have you got for us at number 6 number 6 into the unknown <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Frozen 2. I went to go see Frozen 2. Let it go, James. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Well, um, it's, uh, did talk you see about it at the fancy Disney theater? I did not. No, okay. but, but, but talk about rousing numbers. My God, my God, my God. This is the sequel. The, the biggest the biggest sequel of all time is what they're dubbing it. They're saying they've ne- it, nobody has ever come up with a sequel like this. I tell you, it is Disney's season. Not only have we got Star Wars to look forward to at Christmas, Disney Plus has Disney got Plus. a bazillion subscribers, yes, my and God. this, I think you're right, is broken yeah, records. Christina, Christina Bell, Bell is back, Idina Menzel is back as Elsa and Anna. Um, uh, as musical sequels go, you're saying that this is better than Grease 2. Into the unknown! <laughs> well, I, you know, I prefer back? Grease 2. The snowman, the snowman is back. Mm. Um, uh, uh, I was the only old man in the audience. I went by myself, and everybody was like, Mommy, who's that molester? <laughs> and nobody would sit next to me. Everyone was frightened of me. Um, the <laughs> That's James St. James. <laughs> also known as Mo. Oh! Mo. Um, the story isn't really there. It's very muddled. It's very um, sequel, like straight to... Straight. doesn't seem to matter these days, does it? Doesn't it doesn't seem to matter. No, the ka-ching, songs, ka-ching, the songs IP, are good, ka-ching. although there really isn't a let it go. There really isn't. Um, the, uh, she does sing this one song into the unknown, in which she sings about going off into the unknown. You sound like a whale. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Ellen doing the whales in Finding Nemo. Olaf the Olaf the Snowman has a really who plays by Jonathan Gad. Or, uh, Gad. Gad. What's his? Josh. Josh, Josh Gad. Gad. Yeah. yeah, Josh Gad. He sings a song when I'm older that is absolutely adorable, and you can see every gay boy ever singing this in oh. in schools uh, from now. Lots of auditions. Time. There's a boy band ba- power ballad, '80s power ballad that um, uh, Christoph and his reindeer sing, and all the reindeers are the boy banders, and there's sort of like they're all singing above him, and all the reindeers are singing. That's absolutely adorable. Um, the the everyone is trying to say that they've queer coded Elsa and that Elsa is a is a I, 
is a queer character now in 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 the you know. Um, Wasn't that always the case, even in the first one? Was it? Was it though? Cause I she, think so. Because let it go. What, is this so, it's a power ballad about how she doesn't need men and she doesn't need anybody. It's just herself. Mm. And so she's sort of like more of an asexual icon to me. She's, she's Hillary the, Clinton. She's the. <laughs> she, no, she's sort of. She's, she dates she's herself. She's the LGBTQIA. She's the A. a. She, she is the A, maybe. Is she the there, A plus? They, there's a scene where with, with her and another girl that everyone is jumping on and saying this is how they're showing that the, oh. the, the, the two of them are going to get together. I don't know if I see it. You really have to watch it with an idea of are is Disney going gay? But Disney never really goes no. gay. Di- Disney never. Remember, if there's with, m- um, enough money in it, they will. Beauty and the Beast. There was that huge build up that the two characters were gay, and then you. You get a quarter of yes. a half second of yes. the two of them. But it's, you're saying it's coded gay, right? It's well, undercover right. gay, discreet I've gay. I've talked to a number of, gay of, 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 of LGBTQ people who say that they've seen Elsa being gay in the movie. I don't know that I can see it. Is You'll have to go. And Maybe see you have today. to go to like a midnight showing of it or something. Uh-huh. It's a different cut. So you're, what you're saying is that the snow, the, the cold did bother her, <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> anyway. Oh. She <sighs> went into the Frozen. <laughs> Goes in two in theaters now. Hey, number five. Um, number five. Blowout. The Antonioni movie? The, the Bravo show about the hair. Most dresser? powerful and most destructive industry on the globe is the oil business. And this is a book by my favorite person ever, Rachel Maddow. She's oh, written yeah. a huge 400-page tome. I have to say, I haven't finished it. I'm about three-quarters of the way she through. Is it all one it sentence? Is it all one sentence? It's unbelievably yeah. good. I was going to say, cause I, she does net her on. I'll just say this. I'll just read what? this. What? I piece. love her. The industry but. has fouled oceans, gulfs, lakes, rivers, and streams, induced man-made earthquakes, strewn radioactive waste about the landscape, killed off family pets, farm animals, sickened school children, and stunned state governments into impotent little quizzlings that rip off their own people to make sure the industry gets everything it wants and more. Surpassing all this, the industry is the chief driver of the global climate catastrophe. So that's quite big, right? Wait, that is a one uh, one run on sentence. That is quite big. But then this is also the story of Russia and how Russia became a petrostate and how Putin grabbed power, held on to power. It is amazing the number of narratives she manages to And the to whole Rex Tillerson thing. And weave in. Yes, aided and abetted. We, I, we see this idea of Putin as this enemy. He's been aided and abetted by people like mm-hmm. Rex Tillerson and the oil companies every single step of the way. Um, it's a really rich book. It is also unbelievably outrageous. <laughs> Uh, not expose, but just breaking it down how fracking, which is horizontal drilling, yes. works and the way it just poisons and everyone and everything around it. And I felt that one of the most interesting things is this idea that actually it's called the resource curse. The idea that if you have oil, you're a poor country, have oil, you're going to be great. But she shows that every step of the way, whether it is in Africa, whether it is in Russia, whether it is in the Middle East, whether it is even here in America, how actually oil doesn't really make people richer. It makes a few people uber, uber, uber rich mm-hmm. and kind of and poisons everybody else. Sort of the state of the world. Um, but do, but you know, do, does anything like this ever move the needle? I mean, is, is I don't know. I mean, it's a fantastic book, and I know people basically don't read books anymore. I, I'm actually reading it and also listening to it. I'm re- uh-huh. she, While she's you're driving. Great, she, while I'm driving, yes. <laughs> my electric car. I know. <laughs> you, you, I, I can't even read the book because I have my gas uh, car. But it, it, and she says, you know, obviously we're all implicit in this, but it is really, it, it is it is fascinating. And it, it sort of, you know, if you're looking for one narrative, because when she first published Blowout, it came out a, a month or so ago, I thought, why is she doing this? It doesn't seem, it seems a little tangential. Right. But actually, it's the central narrative. If you're looking for one narrative that explains yeah. Putin, that explains Trump, it's the it's all about the oil. That's yeah. the story that makes it all fit together. It's it's really good. I can't recommend enough. Super duper important. It's called Blowout, Corrupted Democracy, Rogue State Russia, and the Richest, Most Destructive Industry on Earth. It's a fun little escapist <laughs> novel to read when you... <laughs> so take that to your Frozen 2. <laughs> oh! <laughs> There's a jagged little pill. Okay, so nice. uh, coming up this month, Wow Presents Plus, Morning Tea and Tea is coming. For those of you who watched uh, RuPaul's Drag Race UK, and even if you oh. didn't, two of our contestants did killer impersonations of Trump 
and Margaret Thatcher. So we put them together in a morning talk show called Morning uh-huh. TNT. That's it's right. shot in London. It's being edited here in the U.S. and it's going to be available for, to the world. Fabulous. They're the anchors, the Vivian yes. and Bagger Bagger it's Chips. Hilarious. <laughs> um, okay, we'll be right back after break. Question. Yes. Uh, what primetime television show is Rachel Maddow currently a cast member on? It's not her own show. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We're going to have to think about that during the break. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll be right back. Yes. Yeah, wow Report. Pretty Randy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back. Uh, I'm Fenton here with Tom and James. And Blake. Yes. And we're counting down the top 10 things that made us go, wow. wow. Have you stopped saying wow, James? Some sort of protest. Wow. Wow. Oh, gosh. Your good (laughs) mood lasted all of like 25 minutes. Two segments. It's the only thing we have to hold our hands (laughs) on. It's our only gimmick in this whole show. Give us the frozen thing. Come on. No, 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 no. No. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, what was our right. trivia question, Blake? Um, we spoke of Rachel Maddow's new book, Blowout. Um, what primetime television show is Rachel Maddow currently a cast member of? Not her own show. Oh, I'm going to say, isn't she like on Supergirl or something? Isn't it like one of the... I like that. I'm going to say Supergirl. Charmed. She's on Batwoman. Oh, I knew it was a... Same I, thing. Yes, she, she's on Batwoman, yes. She plays Vesper Fairchild. Well, she's. I think she's a narrator. Because um, you know, Batwoman is is uh, uh, queer on the show. She's she's lesbian, I think. I believe. What's her name? Uh, Kane, Candace Kane, C- Catherine Kane, C- C- uh, Camille Kane. What? I tell you, the oh, Batwoman got- girl. Batwoman's Batwoman's secret identity. Ruby Rose. Oh, is Batwoman the on the CW? The actress. Oh, I'm talking about her because secret identity. Because whether you're looking yeah. at Charmed or uh, Supergirl or back, a lot of. A lot of lovely lesbian loving going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. It's great. Supergirl's not gay. Um, but a lot of gayness in it. Maybe in the sequel she will be. Mm-hmm. Like Frozen. Number four. Yeah, no. <laughs> Number four. Okay, I was in New York. I was seeing a lot of theater, but I had to squeeze in one movie at the Paris Theater that has been saved. From, by Netflix. By Netflix. To see a Netflix production of <laughs> A Marriage Story. Oh. Starting, starring Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett's having quite a year, isn't she? Yes. Directed and written by Noah Baumbach. Um, it also has incredible performances by Laura Dern, Alan Alda, Ray Liotta, Julie Haggerty. It sort of feels like a, like a Woody Allen? It's Woody Allen-esque. It, I never saw Kramer versus Kramer, okay. but I feel like it might be something You've like that. You've never seen Kramer? I haven't. You re- that's something you really need to do. All maybe right. over the week, maybe over the long okay. uh, Christmas vacation. That's what I'll do. Um, it, you know, uh, Noah Baumbach was married to Jennifer Jason Lee. He's a director. Jennifer Jason Lee's an actress. Um, Adam Driver is a director. We Scarlett love Johansson Adam, yeah. is an actress. He's an amazing actor. Scarlett was really good this year in Jojo Rabbit. She was fantastic. Really good yeah. She's good in everything. Come on. And they got divorced. So I'm feeling this must be Noah Bob back in Jennifer Jason Lee's divorce story, mm-hmm. and he went and married Greta Gerwig. Who Love of course Greta is Gerwig, a, yeah. A but Bart. it is, it's meant to be kind of a very real and sort of like a divorce without enemies. Like you see both sides, and it's a little uncomfortable to sit through. It's not total escapism. Mm-hmm. Um, I, of course, being dry and old and alone with cats, sit back and gloat thinking, ah, <laughs> I have no heart. You can't break mine. But uh, it, it's really <laughs> well acted. It's just nods. It is. <laughs> James, I guess I know. Uh, we're life partners, but just don't talk to me or talk to me or even look at me. Um, amazing acting on all parts. Is it really long? It's a little bit long, but I had just been seeing Inheritance, which was nine oh, hours or something. So I felt like this is a... Yes. But I have to say, with the Inheritance and with this, you know, we are binging things at our mm. homes for long periods of time. So I was going to see The Irishman this week, um, but it, it is. That's another three and a half hours. I was, I was speaking yeah. uh-huh, between the uh-huh. two. And Irishman, which I haven't seen yet, but I read somebody's bitter review, and they're kind of like, it's everybody not at their peak. And it kind of looks like that. Uh. Everyone's a little... And I'm long on my tooth. I have, my teeth are long. But, but anyway, but this is this is a really fantastic cast. You've got to see Again. Marriage Story. It is beautiful. It's magical. It. 
the well, thing about are there it, Oscars in, in oh, oh, there were a ton of Oscars. Okay, okay. And I think there was Gotham Awards, which I don't even know what those are earlier this week, mm. and they won in every category. Okay. Laura Dern is playing her new character, which is that same Big Little Lies character where she's, you know, totally powerful and very rich and very kind of bitchy, but in a very passive aggressive way. So she's fantastic. Um, you're supposed to not I think you're supposed to not no enemies in this, right? It's just it's just the harshness of divorce and how marriages change. Well, that that's the Kramer versus Kramer thing. Where but you yes. see both sides. But I kind of come out of the movie. And you'll see what you think when you see it on Adam's side, on oh. his side. And I wonder if Noah meant to do that. If I'm reading into it, I could just sit on that. No, but you kind I of feel like God. and people oh. uh, people tend to some people underestimate him. I he's think fantastic. he's brilliant. They have a fight that again he kind of. I guess he kind of wins the acting scar. It's wonderful, but they have this really just those awful fights yes. that escalate, and you say the worst things, yeah. and snots coming out your nose, oh, and you're just how trying many to, times? to hurl grenades at each other, you yes. know, emotional grenades, yes. and uh, and his performance in that scene and so many other scenes. But and, and I do feel bad, you know, the moms always. It, 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 there's a picture in the trailer, but where the kid runs by him, you know, it's just dads don't always get the love and the connection that the mother's doing divorce i think that's really hard it's hard for everybody hmm. but go see marriage story i think it's going to be it's on, actually on netflix today it's, oh, it's on, netflix on netflix today netflix. okay yeah well given that it's netflix as well and we're just living in it yes because they bought the theater they bought the billboard company yes blah 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 number three you know, sorry yeah. number three you keep Number three. Doing all these like sort of dark intellectual things. That was my I'm bringing it back up again. Thank I you. went to go see a, just a popcorn crowd pleaser I saw on Netflix a night before Christmas. Oh, so now they're taking over Christmas as well. <laughs> they, well they certainly are. This is. <laughs> they should talk to Disney about that. <laughs> this is a 14th century knight is inexplicably thrown through time, and he meets up with a school teacher from Ohio played by Vanessa Hudgens who needs to learn the meaning of love in time for Christmas. And she was inexplicably transferred from a Hallmark movie onto Netflix. <laughs> well, no, she was actually no, she was in a Netflix No, class. they bought Hallmark. Didn't you hear? <laughs> it is. This is the, this is the w biggest sh worse than any Lifetime or Hallmarks. This is so schmaltzy and it makes no sense but whatsoever. But you loved it. I loved every single <laughs> second of it. It is so stupid. Nothing in this movie makes a lick of sense. He is from he's from the 1300s. He's inexplicably thrown through time and ends up like I said in it Ohio, happens all the time. Uh, it happens all the time. He instead of Kate speaking Middle English, yes. he is speaking perfect 20th century, 21st century English. He spends a night watching Netflix and then is talking in JK, LOL, BFF, you know, woke That's how Bay, easy it is. To talk, he, yeah, he just spends a night watching Netflix mm -hmm. and he ends up uh, speaking. And then at, at a certain point, he like asks if he can borrow her metal steed, which is you know, a, a car. And he is perfectly able to drive the car. He, <laughs> Without ever having He's started. a knight, of course he could drive a yeah, car. Well, that's just it. it. He, that's um, his trust self-driving Tesla. Yes. <laughs> but how does he know how to push the button to start it? Well, that's just it. He, he's he, a knight. He, he has superhero he he powers. The, button and the windshield wipers go, and he's Whoop. like, "Oh, not that!" And then, but then he manages. He's to figure a it quick all out. learner. He's a very quick <laughs> learner. Do you know the actor's name? Well, like I said, Vanessa Hudgens is um, in the role, and she's absolutely delightful. She's a wonderful. Does he wear a suit of armor all the time? He does wear a suit of armor, but mm. it's like from Party City. It is like oh. totally like it is the cheapest looking thing. <laughs> he's sort of got this floppy hair. And he's adorable, and he plays it with this really sort of goofy enthusiasm. At one point, he goes to a grocery store, and he's just gobsmacked by all the food. And he starts pulling the food out and eating it, and then <sighs> spitting it all out. And it's absolutely adorable. He's, his name is... Uh, Josh Whitehouse, I believe. He was on Pole Dark the last year. Did you fall in love with him? I totally fell in love with him. I was right <laughs> Thank there. Thank God. Unfortunately, what took me out of the movie completely, oh. uh, nothing else oh. matters, but she wears this orange eyeshadow in every damn scene. No matter what outfit she's wearing, she's wearing orange eyeshadow. <laughs> it completely made the whole thing seem unrealistic to me. Well, she's not wearing <laughs> orange eye makeup. Her character Her wearing wears orange. orange eye makeup. That was a character <laughs> choice by Miss Vanessa Hudgens. The ending makes even littler sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. Do they go back in time and live in the 1300s? Well, that's yes. what you and want. And she dies the plague. You want her to go back <laughs> into, in time. He ends up going back, and then he ends up coming back to because he can't stay away from her. Because he doesn't have Netflix in the 1300s. Yeah, well, that's just it. And he brings the plague back with him, and then everyone dies. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, it's, they set it up so that there's a sequel coming. You can see. We get to work on a Christmas movie for Netflix. I feel they're going to be doing them by the dozen yes, by yes. next year. Everyone's yeah. doing Christmas movies. Yeah, it, but 
is, it's, 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 uh, uh, if you have an hour and a half to, that you have nothing else to do, I suggest this will just while away the time beautifully. What's it called again? A Night Before Christmas. K-N-I-G. Now hey, streaming hey. Ah! on Netflix. Okay, number two. Yes. Number two. Well, I was gonna, you know, I've been watching a lot of docs because I'm- Wait a minute, hold on, I, I buried the lead. I'm sorry, I, I have something really important to say. I gotta go back, we gotta go back. We back go to back. number three. <laughs> <laughs> number three. Back uh, to the 1300s. Netflix has started doing a, a show time where- Time travel, they're offering time travel packages. No, 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 no this, oh. this is tying it back to World of Wonder. Okay, oh. Um, they, they, they do an after show now where they have two drag queens, yeah. Trixie and Katya, watching Netflix shows and commenting oh. on it and everything. Oh my gosh, and I so, wish we had thought so, of that. Yeah, so mm. our girls, Trixie mm. and Katya, have, have abandoned uh and have now gone over to Netflix. No, they still do uh they, they, they still do uh an extra gig for much. them, which is but, wonderful. But they're, they're big gig now, they're, what they're most famous no, for. No, James, not the big gig now. <laughs> okay, moving on. No, Number no, two. But they, but they, watch, but they watch the night before Christmas and they talk about it and it's really funny. inexplicably sent you back to the 1300s. I can't hear you, James. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I just, just enough with Netflix. Number two. Number two. Big fat docs. Not ducks. Docs. I've been watching a lot of docs because uh, the uh, voting docs. for the Academy Awards has opened, no. and, and I have a, a slight marginal interest because we have two docs that might qualify. One is Liberty, Mother of Exiles, in the feature doc. And the other is Stonewall Out Loud in the short documentary Wouldn't category. That be amazing? So well, for your consideration, nomination. if the Academy is listening. But um, Big Fat Docs, I've been watching them. 159 feature docs not, uh, competing for an Academy Award and 96 short documentaries. I mean, that, that is a God lot of stuff. So I've been watching a bunch, and I've broken them down into two categories Darth Vader docs, which are deliciously evil people documentaries. Sure. I can only recommend these. Where's my Roy Cohen? The mm -hmm. evil genius behind yes, uh, um, Donald Trump, Trump, yes. But also who did the McCarthy hearings. Yes, and awful, awful, awful man. Evil genius, yes, awful man. Framing John DeLorean, which is a great retelling of John DeLorean who created the futuristic car that really drove back to the future, yes. right? And then was done for all sorts of... Mm, well, was he done or was he framed? <laughs> That's the thing, yes. Criminal shenanigans, drug dealing shenanigans because his car company went bankrupt because it was competing with the big yeah the big boys the three mm -hmm. kingmaker imelda marcos is back she's 80 something you're one plus. of your great friends uh yes uh she is campaigning for her son bong bong uh for political office in the philippines is she a darth vader is she under that category well i do think that the it, this is made by uh lauren greenfield who made um versailles yeah. and um uh what was the other one she did generation wealth uh, and it, it, yes, it basically says they're up to no good. I, th I think it's a little one-sided, but uh, mm. uh, the boy band Khan. Remember Lou Palman? Mm -hmm. Yes. Who did yeah. NSYNC mm -hmm. and Backstreet yes. Boys. Great story, executive produced by Lance Bass. Right, yeah. Uh, telling that whole story about how Lou Have Palman came to Have you seen all these? I've watched all these. They're so, uh, all wow. really good. The Brink, a documentary about Steve Bannon. I was just so fascinated. You know, he was the sort of right-hand man of Trump for a while. Bart. Uh, yeah. Uh, funny enough, not that revealing. I mean, you, you, he's sort of schlubby and going around Europe trying to get everyone to join the Nazi party, but doesn't, doesn't seem to really re reveal that much about him. Oh, uh, Out for Blood, Elizabeth Holmes. Do you remember Theranos, the little drop of blood? With one drop of blood, they could diagnose everything about you. This was the promise, but it was a fraud. Yes, sir. Didn't really work. Yes. What else have we got? And then there's some more nuanced ones, like it's complicated docs. Okay. Uh, XY Chelsea, which is about Chelsea. I, I don't want to. Yes. The whistleblower mm -hmm. who served in prison and then transitioned. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Halston, great documentary about Halston. Oh, Ambiguous character, mm -hmm. you know, genius, but also slightly nightmarish. Jawline, James, I think you should see this if you haven't. Um, Fenton Bailey. Oh, God. Oh, no. James has seen the jawline, which James I said, was James. the one who recommended you watch it. I, we I, had a long conversation about it. We went back and forth. It's we had, really good. We, tweeted, we, we texted back and forth about uh, this. It's really good. Excuse Thanks, me. James. Fenton, tell me all about it. <laughs> James, thank I'm you for fascinated. making me watch jawline. I'm fascinated. Austin Tester, who's really good, right? Yeah. Mm. But it's, it's also it's very about? nuanced. He is 
kind of like in the live broadcast ecosystem, right? He's like a, a he's social a media influencer, self broadcaster, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he rises very quickly, mm -hmm. and then life at the top isn't so sweet, mm -hmm. right? Is mm -hmm. that a fair description? Sure, keep going. Oh gosh, an American it's, factory. It's, you know, it was hot, but now it's something very chilly it's in here. Very <laughs> cold. It's very chilly. So I better wrap this up. American factory, which the Obamas bought right. at Sundance, which is about. Uh, Chinese coming in and doing a co-venture car factory with the Americans. It's about the sort of cultural clash as they try to get Americans to work the way they work. This is work. the first of Obama's Netflix I believe deal? so, yeah. yes. Well, it, it was an acquisition. They acquired it. They didn't make it. So, okay. So that's all I got to tell you about. Mm. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to take a quick break while James St. James beats me up. <laughs> Um, you're listening to Wild Portal Radio. Andy, when we come back, we'll have our number one thing that made us go wow. wow. James Wow. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Wow. Things that make us go wow. Uh, welcome back to the Wow Report. Um, we've been counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow. 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 And we've reached number one. Well, wait a minute. I do want to say that there are a couple other stories this week that, um, that were vying for number one. Were they? There, um, Kamala Harris uh, announced that she's no longer running for president, which yes. was sort of, we, we all need to take why? a moment. Why? And why? 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 She just didn't have the money. Yeah. It, 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 the money ran. Maybe she'll host the Grammys. There was something. also a story that I need to talk about at some point where the a bunch of feral hogs ate a woman in Texas. And yes. that's, a, that's a story that keeps developing and keeps getting bigger and bigger. Why? Well, they keep saying that it's, um, uh, it's a pig bomb is what they're calling it. I think you should talk about it next week. I'll talk about it next okay. week. Um, the pig bomb. I hate to, to, this trumps all of that. <laughs> Everything we've talked about this this week, it, it means nothing compared to the headline. Number one. Josh Brolin burns his pucker hole while perineum sunning. Well, we need to talk about it because perineum sunning is all the rage right now. I'm, sh I'm surprised that, that Fenton hasn't chopped on this. About a month ago, uh, the world was introduced to the practice of perineum sunning when an Instagram health influencer who goes by Ra of Earth, R-A, um, uh, it posted a now viral video of three naked men lying on the grass with their legs up exposing their backsides, their pucker holes, if you will, to the sun. Well, it seems... Are we sure that's just not a clip from a gay porn? Hey. <laughs> no, no, but, but Goop has, has since picked this up, and, and, it's, and it's all the rage now among a certain set now, of people. In a mere 90, 30 yeah. seconds of sunlight on your butthole, you'll receive more energy from this electric node than you would an entire day of being outside <laughs> with your clothes on, according to Raw of Earth said in this video. Now, Josh Brolin... Well, I just need to air mine out every once in a while. I just, uh, Not right uh, now, please. <laughs> but Josh Brolin, who is about as hot as they come. Yeah. Right? Let's, let's take a moment on the radio while you're driving. Let's just imagine what Josh Brolin's pucker hole looks like. I've got but it. But is it your perineum or your pucker hole? Because isn't there a difference as the hole? Well, the perineum is the taint, isn't it? Yeah. Like, that goes from your gooch. The, between, it's between the bull well, sack and the hole is the perennial. No, they just right? say you need to you need to open up your butthole, let the spider webs out. You need to just just let the butt holes connect to the uh, taint hole. The taint, taint holes, holes connect to, to the, the ball sack. Come on, people, it's all the same thing. Once you once you spread those legs, it's all getting it. And well, it Josh all Brolin needs time. did it. He I guess did it for way too long, and he posted, "My Parker hole is crazy burned, and I was going to spend the day shopping with my family, and instead I'm icing and using aloe and burn creams because of the severity of the pain. I don't know who the fuck thought of this stupid shit, but fuck you nonetheless. Seriously, Josh Brolin, look at thyself. Heal thyself, Josh Brolin." Like, like he's blaming others for the fact that he followed this advice. And, and how long was he out there? I Maybe wonder. It's so white that I bet well, it doesn't take it, long. I, I, I think that you're. You, <laughs> Only it, one way to find out. It's all. It has been so long that it's been exposed to the elements, probably. Because that that's where the moment. sun, where the sun don't shine, yeah, right? Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's where it should stay. Where the sun don't shine. Yeah. Bar his Barbara should write a song about it. Paco, perineum sunning. <laughs> Is there a Love. drag race challenge? Soft as a. Yeah, yes, there is. Find your lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Cover a hole. Put the bass in your walk. Head to toe. Let your whole body talk. Oh. Cover a hole. Anyway, mm. I thought I would light in on that light, bright oh, no. note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of whole puns, but I just, I, my mind's gone blank. Maybe for the better. <laughs> yes. 
DragCon Los Angeles coming May 1st, 2nd and 3rd, but not before DragCon UK, January 18th and 19th, and not before Drag Race Live Las Vegas, January 3rd. 30th. A live and Vegas show at the Flamingo. Your tickets are being ordered as we everywhere, speak. Everywhere. And doesn't drag, the Celebrity Drag Race come up very soon? Isn't it just around the corner? It's in, it'll be in the new year. It'll be in January. Okay. Mm. Uh-huh. And yeah. also, season 13 is casting now. Send oh my in God, your, if you're a drag queen, submit, you are. submit your tapes. RDRcasting.com. RDRcasting.com. There's so much to do. It is. It's crazy. I know. Thanks for tuning in to the WOW Report. Oh, my God. <laughs> Same time, same place next week. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go into the unknown. (laughs) That's Tom's butthole. Wow. (laughs) Tom's butthole is the great unknown.